Today we're going to take a look at what's called a normal probability distribution and see if we can identify the basic properties of this normal distribution. What a normal distribution is, it's a continuous probability distribution that has a mound-shaped curve. And it turns out that the average, or mu, or the expected value, is right in the center. So here we have some standardized scores. And this mound-shaped curve, it looks like a bell shape is centered symmetrically right over that average of 100. Then based on our standard deviation, we'll end up seeing how tall and how wide this graph is going to be. A smaller standard deviation will have everything grouped closer to the mean, and it'll be tall and skinny. A larger standard deviation will have everything further from the mean, and it'll be shorter and wider. We can have a normal curve in many different situations, and it really is the backbone of everything we're going to see in statistics from here on out. Before we get into the details of the normal distribution in future lessons, what I want to make sure we understand first is what's called the empirical rule. The idea of the empirical rule is that 68% of all the data values are going to lie either one standard deviation above the mean one standard deviation below the mean, or somewhere in between. And it's symmetrical, 34% on each side. But we say 68% of the data is within one standard deviation of the mean. If we spread out to two standard deviations from the mean, we say that 95% of the data is going to fall within two standard deviations of the mean, either above or below. And if we split that up in halves, we end up getting 47.5% on each side, 34% in the blue, 13.5% in the red. And if we want to go as far as three standard deviations away from the mean, turns out that 97.7% of the data values, approximately, are going to fall within three standard deviations of the mean. These percentages also turn into probabilities. The area under the normal curve is the probability that you fall within a given range. So if we're going to apply this to some problems, we need to know how to calculate the number of standard deviations we are from the mean. The formula z equals x minus mu over sigma, or our data value minus the mean divided by the standard deviation is called the z-score. This z-score tells us the number of standard deviations a value is from the mean. If it's positive, we're above the mean. If it's negative, we're below the mean. Let's take a look at an example. And I put a copy of our empirical rule picture over on the right. Let's say the time a student travels to work is normally distributed. The average student takes 23 minutes with a standard deviation of 4 minutes to get to work. We want to know what percent traveled less than 15 minutes. So first we need to know is how many standard deviations from the mean is 15? Well, our z-score is our value 15 minus the mean of 23 divided by the standard deviation of 4. 15 minus 23 is negative 8 divided by 4 is negative 2.0. So if I were to draw a little graph, negative 2.0 is over here. We've got our mean in the middle. Negative 2.0 is off to the left. We want to know what percent are less than the 2.0, less than two standard deviations from the mean. Well, on our graph, two standard deviations from the mean is right here. And we see inside that tail is a total of 2.35%. So 2.35% of students must be traveling less than 15 minutes. Let's say we have a sample of 25 students. How many of those students would we expect to be traveling between 19 and 27 minutes? Well, let's find out how many standard deviations from the mean those guys each are. So for the 19, we'll take 19 minus the mean of 23 divided by the standard deviation of 4. 19 minus 23 is 4, divided by 4 is 1. 
negative 1. So we're one standard deviation to the left. For the 27, 27 minus 23 divided by 4 is also 1, but this time it's a positive 1. So this means in our curve, we're between negative 1 and positive 1, standard deviations from the mean. Well, in our graph, between negative 1 and positive 1, we want to be between that. That's these middle blue areas. And we know 68% of our data is between 1 and negative 1. However, we want to know of 25 students, how many is that going to be? So we'll take the 25 students and we'll multiply by the 0.68 to see how many students we expect to travel within that time frame. When we do that, we get 17. So we would expect in a random sample of 25 students, 17 of them are traveling somewhere between 19 and 27 minutes. And that's how we can break down the empirical rule. We find out how many standard deviations we are from the mean and use these percentages that have been given to us to calculate an estimated probability. So hopefully this video helped introduce you to the normal distribution and identify its basic properties. Hopefully it will be useful as you work on your assignment.